let us talk about measurement of the body fluid compartments. The second section in our discussion is measurement of the body fluid compartments. We need to measure these body fluid compartments because, uh, because the a patient suffering from dehydration or a patient suffering from loss of intracellular fluid volume, all these things are possible and therefore measurement of the body fluid compartments. And uh, the conventional method is indicator dilution method, commonly called as a Stuart Hamilton method. So, this method is based on the Stuart Hamilton principle and hence called as uh, Stuart Hamilton indicator dilution method. Sometimes it is also called as dye dilution method because uh, there are certain dyes which are used for the purpose of measurement of these body fluids. Well, uh, so indicator dilution method. Let us see the principle of this method first. Let us say we want to measure the ECF volume. First step will be select a dye or an indicator. A known volume of this indicator will be taken. Known initial volume. So, known initial volume uh, that is I of a certain particular indicator and this is now injected into the compartment which we are measuring, alright. If we are measuring the ECF volume, we will inject uh, this indicator, this dye or indicator into the compartment, into the ECF. Uh, it will uniformly disperse into the compartment. This indicator with a known initial volume, it will uniformly disperse into that compartment. Okay. So, that is the first prerequisite, that is the first property that is required the indicator that you choose, it should uniformly disperse into that compartment. And the other property which is required is that it should not leave that compartment. Ideally speaking, it should not leave the compartment, it should stay in the compartment. And another property is that it should it should remain free in the compartment, means uh, it should not get bound to plasma proteins or get, get bound to other proteins. So, it should not get bound, because if it gets bound to proteins or other substances, then it will not spread uniformly throughout the compartment, it should remain free. These are the properties uh, which uh, are the prerequisites for an indicator to measure the, to measure particular body fluid compartment, right. So, a known volume of an indicator, known initial volume that is I of the indicator was taken and it was injected into the compartment that we are measuring. It got uniformly distributed, uniformly dispersed into the compartment. And then we collect the sample from that compartment. Let us say if we are measuring ECF, we will collect the sample from the ECF, extracellular fluid. And we will measure the concentration that is C of that particular indicator. Look. The name of the method is indicator dilution method. The indicator was injected into the compartment, it got dispersed into the compartment means 
it was diluted into that compartment. So after it got diluted into the compartment, we collect the sample from the compartment and measure the concentration uh, of that particular indicator. And then the formula is V is equal to I upon C. V, the volume of that compartment is equal to I that is initial volume of the indicator injected and C is concentration of that indicator after it got uniformly dispersed into the compartment. So look, very simple to understand. Uh, let's just take an example. Let me just explain this in uh, simple terms. We selected a particular indicator with a known initial volume. This much volume of the indicator is selected and let's assume that we are going to measure the volume of a compartment or measure a certain volume. Let's say we, are, we want to measure this volume. So this indicator with a known volume will be placed here. It will get uniformly dispersed into this uh, volume which we are measuring. So it got uniformly dispersed and then we collect the sample from this compartment and measure the concentration of this indicator. Look, more the indicator gets diluted means its concentration is going to be less, right? Less concentration means more dilution, okay? Now consider this. Suppose we have another volume to be measured. This is another volume of some other fluid uh, to be measured. And now I put the same indicator with the same volume into this, uh, into this compartment. Look at the difference. Volume of the compartment is less here. Volume is greater, this one. And now I am putting the same amount of indicator, same amount in this particular compartment. What do I expect? What do you expect? Come on, say this. Yes, the dilution of this indicator will be to a greater extent. This same initial volume placed in this compartment and then later on again in this compartment. So dispersion of the indicator will be much greater in this compartment, isn't it? You can see here because there is much more volume, greater volume is there. So it will dilute the indicator to a much greater extent. See, same amount of indicator was placed here and here and then dispersion and dilution of that indicator was greater. That means concentration that is C will be less. More dilution means less concentration, simple and that therefore C concentration of the indicator once it got dispersed into the compartment. That C is in the denominator. So less the concentration means more dilution and more dilution means volume will be greater. This is, you can see here, C is in the denominator. So lesser the concentration means more will be the volume of the compartment. Volume of the compartment is larger, greater. So it is diluting the indicator to a much greater extent. And therefore its concentration, when we select the, collect the sample and measure the concentration, the concentration will be less because dilution was to a greater extent. Why dilution was to a greater extent? because volume of that compartment is more. So it will dilute that indicator to a much greater extent. That is the principle, that is the basis for uh, 
indicator dilution method. Now, uh, so therefore, the point to be noted is lesser the concentration of the indicator means more will be the volume of that compartment which, which we are measuring. Okay, uh, because lesser the concentration means it got diluted to a greater extent. Okay, and remember this or just understand this and you will understand the principle. Uh, let me add here, let's say we injected an indicator into the compartment and it left the compartment after injecting it initially, it leaves the compartment. In that scenario, the equation will slightly get modified. The equation will be V is equal to I minus A upon C. Since this is the final equation, therefore, I would suggest that you repeat it at least twice or thrice in your mind. V is equal to I minus A upon C. V is equal to I minus A upon C. V is volume of the compartment that we are measuring. I is initial volume of the indicator, initial mass of the indicator that we injected into the compartment. A is amount of the indicator that leaves the compartment. If you injected, let's say, uh, 10 liters of a particular indicator into extracellular fluid volume and out of that 10 liter or 10 liter will be too much, let's say, uh, 1 liter of an indicator was injected into the compartment and from that 1 liter, some 0.1 liter or 100 ml leaves the compartment immediately after you injected it, it left the compartment, it left the ECF. So, amount of the indicator that left the compartment, that is A. Let us write it here. Amount of the dye that left the compartment, dye or indicator. Amount of the indicator that left the compartment. It did not stay in the compartment. Compartment which we are measuring, whose volume we are measuring. So, in this case, this amount was never involved in getting diluted by the compartment. It left the compartment simply. So, we are not interested in that and therefore, we will uh, minus it from the numerator. This is initial amount of the indicator that we injected and this is the amount that leaves the compartment. So, this will have to be done minus from the initial volume because this is not involved in the dilution of that indicator. So, once we do the minus, then the remaining indicator, remaining amount of indicator is going to be diluted in that compartment. Therefore, it is necessary to perform this minus function. And then denominator is C, concentration of the indicator, concentration of the dye uh, after it got dispersed we collect the sample, measure the concentration of the indicator. If you, if there is still any doubt, just look at this particular diagram and try to understand. One last time, I am just repeating it um, for the sake of clarity. Same volume of or same amount of indicator is placed in this volume to be measured and later on in this volume to be measured. Obviously, this volume is greater you can see here. So, dilution of the indicator will be to a much greater extent. Indicator diluted more, that means its concentration. When you select this, when you collect the sample and measure the concentration of the indicator, the concentration of the indicator will be less. And therefore, less the concentration more will be the volume of that compartment which we are measuring. It could be ECF, it could be any compartment that we are measuring. So, uh, that is about the measurement of uh, the var uh, various compartments by indicator dilution method. Well, uh, 
we have said ECF is 14 liters and 3 fourth and 1 fourth is the division, interstitial fluid and plasma. Let me just add one thing here, which we missed out earlier. Of this extracellular fluid volume, 1 liter is called as transcellular fluid. Transcellular fluid. For example, there are fluids like aqueous humor inside the eye or synovial fluid in the joints or pleural fluid in the pleural cavity. Minimal, but it's still there. All these fluids put together, they are not inside the cell and they are in particular cavities. So, such fluids put together constitute transcellular fluid. It's about 1 liter. So, that's a part of extracellular fluid compartment. We just missed that point earlier. I thought I'll mention it here. Okay. So, indicator dilution method is clear to you. I hope it is. Repeat once again the formula without looking at it. V is equal to I minus A upon C. Volume of the compartment being measured is equal to I initial amount of the indicator injected minus A is amount of the indicator that left the compartment after initial injection. So, it, it is not involved in the dilution. It is not going to be diluted. It just leaves the compartment. And then denominator is C, uh, the concentration of that indicator.